Hi, my name is Steve Kinney. I'm the front end architect at Temporal, and this is a course on using Figma to create user interface prototypes. We'll cover basic shapes and frames that will hold the different pieces of the UI. You'll also learn how to create reusable styles, typography, and components that you can use to create prototypes that you can show to friends, family, and maybe even potential customers before you begin the engineering work to build out the entire application. I hope you enjoy the course. What I did was I basically looked at all of this, and I tried to figure out, like, OK, what are all the colors here? And as you can kind of see, if you need to unlink a style at any point, you just hit detach, and you go back to the hex code if you want to like break from your system. Um, went through, like, what are all the general colors here, and like laid them out. There were nine shades of like gray in this case. Like, at Temporal, we use uh, Tailwind uh, as the kind of the basis. And so that's kind of where um, I started with the whole numbering system that we used in the previous example. Someone asked, like, what do the numbers mean? Um, usually, you know, I kind of took them from the ones that, you, the color palette that comes with Tailwind. We go 50 for a very light color, all the way up to 900. So we've got, like, nine different shades of gray. There's one here. It's just roughly the same as the background of the, um, of the page itself. You can see it there. Also, you can change the background of the page if you want. And so I've got these colors. So I took the other colors that existed and just tried to roughly like line them up in this case, right? And so I could, and you don't have to in this in this particular case, like you don't need this color palette. But if I wanted to go ahead and um, turn this into a color theme, so I can change different pieces here, um, I could do that pretty easily. So I'm going to grab these. I'm just going to ungroup this. I, I'm not going to mess around with the colors, the grays too much. I'm just going to grab these colors, which again I have named, and I will probably end up um, deleting this at some point, so you don't have to follow along particularly. But this is how to like reverse engineer if you need, if you have a bunch of designs and you want to figure out like, hey, cool, they use hex values everywhere, um, and I want to do the thing that I learned about in that course that I watched. Um, how do I get us there? This is kind of how you would like reverse engineer that a little bit. So in this case, I did go ahead and I named them all. Um, I called it just like primary, secondary, and then tertiary. Like, I don't know. Mark probably knows better what the actual like, names of the color in the CSS are. But I was like reverse engineering this and not going through the source code. So I took a screenshot, and that's all I had to work with in my case. So you can see I have all these colors here. I could use that plugin that we saw before. And I can go ahead, and in this case, I'm just going to do the, which one, styler. I'm going to hit generate styles. Uh, and now I have these new primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, there's a little bit of like um, bespoke pieces here where I kind of need to go ahead and like turn any given one of these colors. All right, so this is like selecting the entire frame. It's giving me everything that is that shade of blue, uh, which looks to be. Um, that's, this one is, I think, that dark blue right there. So I can go ahead and I can just pick this one, and I have those colors I just made. Cool. Now, if I go into this right here, you can see this now that it's, we've linked it up to that style. Now, there was one thing of that color. But the cool thing about this is I can select all. Like, I can be like, all right, neat. Uh, what I would like you to do now is go ahead and let's grab, um, we can say this one's easy, right? That's going to be get everything on the page that that's color and make it the secondary color. right? Grab the darker one, we'll make it the slightly darker version of the secondary color. Um, this looks like that one. And I could like read the hex codes too as well. Uh, go ahead and let's see, that looks like that medium one. See, I got it, yep. Uh, that one looks slightly wrong. You can see it changed on the page because they're all that color now. So maybe it's the slightly darker one. There we go. This should be the medium one. I think that was most of the colors. The rest of them are all grays. So now, let's see, yep. So now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and like rebrand the front end master's colors really easily. Uh, oh, the masthead I missed. Too. So let's grab, that's, it was just a darker color. So we'll go ahead and, and we'll go ahead and we'll say that that is now 
this color. So now if I wanted to quickly rebrand this entire site, I could, because that's, that's what Mark brought me here for, right? So we could say, like, let's grab this color and let's adjust it. Let's, let's, we'll get that. You can hear the groaning. I can kind of change multiple things. As I can change all the buttons all at once and kind of re-theme and restyle this page. And my styles will update everything across the entire application. So this works for one frame. But imagine you have like multiple pages of every flow going through the front of the master site. You can basically like change all the colors incredibly easily, like reverse engineering it from just a few pages and then applying it all the way through. Right? Yeah. So once you've made all the color styles, how can you like quickly figure out what the hex code was if you like forgot or needed yeah, for some reason? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so if you need to kind of figure out like, cool, I've now made this code. Now I see primary 500 everywhere. Um, I can just go ahead and first of all, I go into inspect. Um, it's still there in this case. So I will always have the hex code somewhere. I can even get the RGBA or you know whichever, whatever style you prefer. Um, and then you could also go to edit the style and you can change the hex code there as well. So it could work the other way. You're like, I want to get the hex code or someone came in with, here's the new hex codes for our new branding, right? You could also go to edit style and paste in the hex codes as well, right? Or make a bunch of layers. Like the same way I generated styles to begin with, you could also just like adjust those swatches again and then regenerate styles a second time, right? Um, one of the things we also referenced is like, in some cases, there's a whole big color theme, right? If you want to get, as you can see, I just grabbed just the shades that were on this page, right? And so let's say hypothetically, let's uh, go back to the normal colors. I was like, all right, let's grab at least these kind of middle colors here. Um, if I wanted to, there's another plugin that I'll drop a link to, which, and there's a whole bunch of these, honestly, called UI Color Palette, which will take a set of colors and then like generate the entire palette for you. So you can hit create color palette. And then from here, you can say update local styles and it will push up all 50 through 900 of those color styles for you, right? So if you only have a few colors to work with, you know, and you're like, again, like in my case of like reverse engineering that one page, I'm like, cool, but now I do need a lighter blue I'm not good enough at color theory myself to figure it out. I can at least have some help and like generate a full palette of all the basic colors, right? And that'll kind of, again, you can then update the local styles and you'll get, let's just hit the button and see what happens. Create local styles. And now not only do I have brand that I made before, but I also have a full, um, looks like it has some slight little issue there but I have a full set of colors that I can also use as well, generated from those other ones. Um, but I'm going to delete all those in a second anyway, because now I have way too many colors, and I will just get confused later. But we've got those ones. So you can just generate a full color palette um, with a few colors. You know, If you have one at wherever you work, you can like kind of turn it into a set of Figma styles. You have a bunch of options that you can use for getting stuff in place. OK, things you can override. You can change the text in any component, as we saw with the post-it note. Um, you can change like a lot of the colors. You can change the shadow and the blurs. You can change the layout grids. You can change nested components, which we'll get into. The things you can override is not as important as the list of things that you can't override. We, there we go. Uh, which is the order of things, right? So if I wanted to grab this title and move it, I can't. I can't. Even though this is an auto layout, I can't move the order of the components. Um, I can't really change its position at all, right? Um, any constraints, the bounds of text layers. I can't add a new component in here. There's an asterisk. I, I can cheat. I'll show you how to cheat in a little bit. But generally speaking, I am somewhat locked in to the general structure of this component that I can't really change. Um, but there are some ways, like once you kind of like conceptually wrap your head around it, there are ways to do most of the things that you want, if not um, all, but most. Uh, so we've got that kind of in place. So how do you create a component? Like I said, you can take almost anything. So here's like a card component that we made before or a version of that. 
I can grab this. I have a bunch of different options. I can just, because obviously that's a symbol for a component, right? Duh. Uh, I can go hit create component. As you can guess from the hotkey, I can also hit option command K. And that will turn something into a component. So you know what? Let's start. Let's turn this into a component. Um, in this case, I'm going to hit option command K. All right, it changes subtly. You notice that like this frame is kind of like blue and has a blue word. This one's now purple. That means it's a component. That's not the important part. The important part is it now lives in your assets. Right? And your assets is a collection of all your components, either your components or if you publish a library, which we will talk about at the very end of this, um, it's a collection of all your components. So now, if you wanted to drag in another one of these, you can drag in a whole bunch. And I want to say, you know what? Board arrays is now 32. They all change. Right? So you can create a very kind of powerful system around this. Um, but I could theoretically change this one to lots of colors. So that's what we call an override. Right? This one has this instance component had something changed versus the main component. This one did not. So I could theoretically say rainbow. You'll notice that the one that had never had the text changed gets the update. But the one where I overrode the property does not get the update. Um, so here, we can, let's go ahead and we'll say, hey, the text color here should be this color. They all changed. Uh, let's go change this one to its own new color. All right, so this has now got an override on the color. So if I go ahead here, and I change this again. Let's change it to, uh, change it back to black. Right? This is override with the text content. This one had an override of the text color. They inherited the change, but not in the places where they overrode it. This is the same way like inheritance in JavaScript might work as well. The, the metaphor applies even if it is a totally different paradigm. Right? The whole conceptual framework works. Um, so this gives you a lot of power. It means you can drag in um, a button, change the text of any given button, but if you change like the label in the main component, it's not like every button in your UI is automatically going to receive that update. It will simply only the ones that have never had that overridden. You know, if you make one particular button a different color, it will remain that color, right? And you can combine this with styles and stuff along those lines. I will probably say this a few more times today, but I'm going to say it now, and I will repeat it because it bears repeating. Um, my general rule is stuff like stuff that I can put in styles like the color, fonts, I tend to leave that to the styles in a lot of cases. Um, and you know, I can override a style too. I can detach a style. And stuff like the, the question we had earlier, can you store border radii in a style? You can't, but that kind of stuff, the structural pieces I leave to the components and the styles I leave to the styles, right? I might have a danger button or a secondary button that is fundamentally um, like different from the primary button, but like the color red that it is, I will store in a style so I can change all of them all at once. And that way I can use the same color. Like, Let's say hypothetically I might have links, I might have a button, I might have a modal title. If they all use the same style, I can change what a danger color means in my application or the brand color separate from going into every component and doing it. OK. So let's look at creating a component. We'll do this one together, and then you'll work on input fields. Uh, I can make a button. I can. We saw how easy it is before. I can take this button as well. And all that we're going to do is we'll go here, and we're going to say, Create component. All right, I hit the little button. Now it is a component. You can see it here as well. Uh, one of the interesting things that you should note, and we'll explore this a little bit more in a bit, um, how you organize your components is incredibly important. Um, by default, you'll notice that like it got this is it has components because the name of the page we're on is called components, not because these are all components. Everything is a component in here. Um, however. This one is in a frame called creating a component. So you look at like Figma automatically tries to organize it for you. Right? So as you're building out a design system on your own page, right, and we'll take a look at like how you can do that, you might have a frame for all your buttons. Now they're all organized under one dropdown called 
you know, in this case, create a component, but I want to hide all the course materials. I can see just a given piece. We'll see where this is somewhat interesting as we get more advanced with our components as we go along.